for the last talk before the coffee break, we have like Nicholas Pierce that, that will talk us about the uh, stochastic uh, AEM algorithm for multi level cross classified and so models. So, uh, place up to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I'm Nicola, I'm a first year PhD student from the University of Cali. I present the work in collaboration with my supervisor, Jacobo Mbuk. Uh, we use finite mixture models uh, for any multi-level cross-classified data structures. Data are cross-classified when uh, first uh, level units can be simultaneously nested within two or even more higher levels. And uh, mixture models are in general a class of statistical models in which the uh, distribution of the data is uh, approximated by uh, convex near combination of other probability distributions. Uh, mixture models provide a useful contribution to cluster analysis as a completely probabilistic methods where each cluster is described by one or more mixture components. So first I describe the uh, general mixture models and uh, how they can be used to consider uh, hierarchical multi-level structures when, uh, where uh, units are nested into different levels. And then uh, I consider the extension of other phase of uh, cross-classified structures. So a uh, finite mixture with L components is defined as the weighted sum of densities at L with weights of PL, where uh, PL are known as mixing proportions. And uh, they are the probability of Xj equal L, where Xj are known as uh, membership variables or component labels. In the case of categorical variables and assumption of uh, local independence between these indicators, uh, mixture models are known as latent class models, and uh, the variables Xj are known as latent classes. And uh, we focus on this particular case. It is important to observe that uh, in this context, not only theta 1, theta L, the parameters uh, associated with the head density is at L, but also the mixing proportions are parameters to be estimated. So we write the log likelihood of the model, and uh, with uh, the introduction of uh, the latent um, variable set uh, Lj, uh, this is known as complete log likelihood. And uh, we can use a maximum likelihood approach to estimate the parameters through the expectation maximization algorithm. The EM algorithm is uh, an iterative algorithm that uh, involves two steps. The step computes the conditional expectation of a complete data log likelihood given the observed data. And then step is a maximization step, so uh, find the parameters that uh, maximize the quantity that we write in the step. So now we consider the extension of uh, latent class analysis to multi-level hierarchical uh, structures already considered in literature by Jean Vermont. We build a mixture model for each uh, level, and uh, we obtain not only a clustering for the lower level, but also a clustering for higher level units. Um, we observe how the structure of the data requires to modify the step of the EM algorithm to take into account uh, membership variables at uh, various levels. A typical example is to consider students as uh, level one units uh, belonging to the same school, uh, the higher level units. So we indicate with Y, A, J, K, the value of the indicator I of lower level unit J with the higher uh, level unit K. We consider two membership uh, variables, X, J, K for the lower level and the corresponding latent classes are indicated with L and uh, WK for the higher level and the corresponding latent classes are indicated with H. These models are described by two equations. The first for the higher level, so connect observations uh, belonging to the same group, is a mixture with weight uh, probability of WK equal H. And the second is a mixture for the lower level with weight probability of XJK given plus membership for the higher level. So the total parameters to be estimated are the mixing proportions for the higher level, PH, the mixing proportions for the lower level, PL given H, and uh, the distribution parameters. We write uh, the log likelihood, and in order to apply the EM algorithm, the expectation of a complete log likelihood. And uh, we observe that we need to consider the joint conditional probability between uh, the two membership variables W and X given the observed data. In order to reduce complexity and handle this joint conditional probability, we can split this uh, into two parts the probability of W given Y and the probability of X given W and Y, J, K. So we use also the assumption that given class membership for the higher level, WK, class membership for the lower level, X, uh, is independent of the information of other memberships. 
So with these uh, considerations, uh, Vermouth proposed a variation of the EM algorithm that they call the upward-downward <coughs> algorithm that uh, computes the step. First, in the upper part, uh, computes the probability of WK given Y for each group. Then in the downward part, uh, computes the probability of X given W and Y, and then put uh, them together to obtain the joint uh, condition of probability. Now uh, I consider the extension to uh, Latent class for our case of cross-classified structures. Uh, how I said at the beginning of the presentation, they are cross-classified when the units uh, can be considered classified along more than one dimension. Uh, in particular, we consider the case in which uh, level one units are nested into two independent uh, second levels. A typical example is to consider students as a first uh, level um, simultaneously uh, classified by the school they attend and also the neighborhood where they live. So school and neighborhood are the first and the second level two cross classified. Uh, we indicate in this case with Y, A, J, K, Q, the value of indicator I, uh, of first level unit J uh, belonging to the cross-classified group KQ. We need to introduce another latent variable, uh, Z, to consider the second level to cross-classified. So we obtain a clustering for the lower level with L classes, uh, considering the membership variables X, J, K, Q, and simultaneously a double clustering for the two higher levels with H and R latent classes with uh, the membership variables WK and Z2. Also in this case, the model is described by two equations. The first for the two second levels is a mixture with weights uh, probability of W and Z. We can split this into the probability of W times probability of Z, uh, considering the assumption that the W and Z are mar marginally independent. And uh, the second equation is uh, uh, a mixture for the lower level, so the weights are the probability of X given plus membership for the two higher levels. So the total parameters are the mixing proportions for the two second levels, EHPR, the mixing proportions for the first level, PL given HR, and the distribution parameters. We observe how uh, the complexity of uh, the structure of the data gives more complex equations, and uh, also the computational complexity increases rapidly. In fact, we have uh, NKQ plus two latent variables for each uh, cross-classified group, where NKQ is the number of observations in uh, the combination of groups of KQ. And uh, when we consider the total number of uh, categories, we have uh, NKQ possibilities for each uh, L. And once we fix the lower level, we have also HR possibilities for uh, the two second levels. So even with more, more number of uh, NKQ and latent classes, the total number of categories becomes very really large. But uh, in this framework, the main problem is that when we write the expectation of a complete log likelihood, we need to consider the joint conditional probability between uh, W, Z, and X given the observed data. We um, can split these into two parts, the probability of W and Z given Y and probability of X given W, Z, and Y, J, K, Q, with the assumption, like in the case of hierarchical models, of uh, independence of level one within higher level uh, units. But uh, once we uh, condition on the observed data, uh, W and Z are not more uh, independent. So uh, the joint conditional probability for the second level can be factorized in the product of the two marginal uh, distributions. And uh, this is for this reason that uh, in this case we cannot use an algorithm like the upward downward algorithm that uh, we considered before, but we need to use a stochastic version of the EM algorithm. Um, with deep sampler simulation techniques that uh, allows to uh, reconstruct this uh, joint conditional probability. So the idea of the stochastic EM is uh, to insert a stochastic step between the E-step and the M-step, where uh, missing data are simulated by considering the joint conditional distributions uh, given the observed data and the current estimation of the model parameters. A similar approach is uh, used in latent block models that are models to consider co-clustering, that is the simultaneous clustering of rows and columns of a matrix. Uh, so a deep sampler uh, works in this way, consider full conditional distributions uh, to generate a stationary Markov chain uh, converging to the joint conditional probability required. So in particular, the algorithm that we propose works uh, in this way, after initialization of parameters, the S is step 
running lip sampler, so simulate the tablet Z from the full conditional probabilities uh, for the second level. So simulate W from the probability of WK given Y and Z, and Z from the probability of ZQ given Y, and the value of W that we simulated before. This generates the stationary chain converging to the joint conditional probability. Then simulate X given W and Z. Then step, update the mixing proportions and the distribution parameters. And then the final parameters are calculated as the mean over the iteration of the bounding period. Then the classification step is computed by several S steps with the values of parameters fixed to the mean. So the final classification is estimated, uh, how we can see here, as the mode of their sample distribution. We propose also a second version of the algorithm that uh, don't consider the each step and each step separately, but uh, put them together. So first, uh, simulate W and X, update the parameters, simulate Z, considering the value of W that we simulated before uh, to consider the Gibson Gray approach, simulate X given W and Z, and then update again uh, the parameters. In particular, we start uh, this work considering binary data, so we have a Bernoulli distribution. And uh, in the step, the Bernoulli parameters are updated as the proportions of uh, those observations fall in the latent class L that have value 1 of the binary indicator Y. So the total number of parameters uh, to be estimated is uh, H plus R minus 2 for the mixing proportions for the second level, L minus 1 times HR for the mixing proportions for the lower level, and for each uh, binary variable I that we are considering, we have a larger parameters. So now I show some uh, results that uh, I obtained simulating a data with 800 units, considering 20 and 10 groups, and uh, 3 and 2 Latin classes for the second level, and uh, 3 Latin classes for the first level. The results are obtained with 250 iterations uh, using version 2 of the algorithm and 100 as part of the Here we can see the value of log likelihood uh, for each iteration. And uh, we observe the typical behavior of uh, the likelihood uh, when uh, we consider stochastic uh, EM that uh, don't uh, increase the likelihood for each iteration but uh, generates the Markov chain with a unique uh, stationary distribution that uh, fluctuates around the maximum value. Uh, how we can see in these error classification tables, we obtain good results in terms of uh, classification, <coughs> but also good results in terms of estimation of parameters. But the values of the tables are the differences between the estimated parameters and the true one. And for instance, here are the, uh, we can see the values of TH uh, for each iteration followed by a moving average over the last 150 estimations. Uh, we obtain the same results with the version 1 of the algorithm, but uh, clearly version 2 is faster because when we consider version 1, we also need to use the number of iterations only for the S step. Uh, we can also measure the mixture component uh, separation, uh, calculating the error rate between the estimated the classification obtained with the classification step and the uh, one. For the previous data set, for which we obtain good results, the error rate uh, is 0 0.17, but we observe that the higher error rates are associated with in separate data set, for which uh, the algorithm gives slightly worse results for both estimation and the classification. So uh, it is important to observe that the goodness of uh, the results are related to the uh, mixed component separation of uh, data set itself. So here another example, uh, I simulated another data set um, with the same number of groups and Latin classes, but with five uh, categorical variables, each with four groups. Uh, so in general, the number of um, distribution parameters uh, is uh, G minus 1 times Li, where G is the number of, uh, of categories. Uh, I simulated a well-separated data set, uh, considering that uh, all observations in the combination of uh, Latin classes HR for the uh, higher level uh, fall in only one Latin class for the uh, lower level. So for this uh, well-separated uh, data set, uh, how we can see in these tables, uh, the algorithm is, uh, is exactly the, the true uh, classification. We are still working uh, on implementation in C++ code of the algorithm 
we want to consider some uh, computational problems like uh, label, label switching that are uh, identifiability problems that uh, could arise when the values of the likelihood is the same for all permutations of parameters. Uh, we don't uh, observe these problems with the well separate data set, but we feel that the separate data set that these problems could arise. Also consider model selection. Uh, in fact, now I consider fixed the number of uh, the components of the mix. But uh, it is also important to extend the typical information criteria like uh, AC, BAC, or uh, ACL, for our case of cross-classified model, to select the best number of components. Of course, extend the algorithm to consider not only binary or categorical variables, but also continuous variables and the mixed type of variables. And then develop a Bayesian version of the, the model, considering Dirichlet priors for the mixing proportions and the appropriate priors for uh, the distribution parameters according to the particular distribution that uh, we are considering. Here are the main references and uh, Thank you for your attention. Is there any question from you? Maybe two questions or more. Uh, can you come to slide 16? 16. Okay. Uh, in the first step here, you just simulate W from uh, the posterior, the conditional posterior, right? And how do you simulate it? Because maybe it's com it, it's not so easy to simulate from. I, I don't know which kind of like, distribution is that, but um, no. yes, because in the Gibson approach, we use the full conditionals that are these two. Okay, but do you have the? Um, are you able to sample to easily sample from this yes. distribution? Okay. Okay, now we didn't yes, catch that. And another thing, uh, have you tried with something like uh, introducing some uh, accept or reject scheme, some, uh, something like uh, Gibbs within uh, Metropolis Hastings? Uh, okay, uh, no, because the um, Gibbs sampler um, is enough to simulate uh, from the full condition of, because we have the, the form of the full condition of distributions. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm wondering that why, because uh, um, if you, for example, introduce uh, something like a Tropis Austin's uh, step that is just a uh, accept or reject scheme, yeah. you can introduce also something like a, a reversible jump in mm -hmm. Austin's, and then you can move also uh, the number of components, so you can uh, introduce uh, the multiplication of the number of components. Oh, okay. With this reversible jump and drop this last thing. So okay. you modify the number at each iteration. Okay. So it's just wondering if, if you try that. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, thank you. Right. Is there any other question? Okay, any also questions? Uh, the, the first one is actually that I didn't really get uh, why the second version is. It's faster than the first one. Okay, because in this uh, version we need to, uh, to obtain the, the results uh, good as uh, uh, obtained with the second version. We need to consider num number of iterations only with uh, for the one and uh, two points. Okay. Yeah. Here it's faster because uh, we don't uh, we consider only the number of iterations for the, uh, the EM and not the number only for the Gibbs approach. Okay, but so in, in the first version you uh, so you run the Gibbs center and then you optimize yes. and that's it, right? Yes. Okay. And and okay, and second question in, in, in the second version, um, so you observe the convergence of the chain, right, uh, through the numerical results. But did you also try to, or did you manage to prove convergence, or are you planning to do so, like? Because if you mix the steps, you don't have the guarantee, the guarantee of convergence, right, of the chain. Uh, um, with the, uh, how I said here, for example, with the, uh, this uh, um, stochastic YAM, uh, in fact, the likelihood, uh, stochastic YAM don't, uh, doesn't increase the likelihood for each iteration, but uh, it's true that it generates the uh, unique stationary chain. Okay. It's the problem of the, uh, the likelihood, because we, 
use the stochastic step to approximate the joint condition of uh, probability. Okay. okay. Uh, anyone? Yes, I have a question. Um, you know, for your stochastic um, algorithm, can you combine with Gibbs something? Can you clarify what is your convergent criterion? Is how does it convert? Oh, okay. Mm. Use a Gibbs-Sander approach. Uh, here we can uh, simulate from the full condition of, uh, for the second level of classification. Uh, even this uh, don't keep depends on the, the first level. But uh, then, in, uh, in uh, step three, uh, we simulate from uh, these uh, posterior probabilities. But uh, um, I don't consider uh, all the posterior probabilities. But uh, with this uh, W Z. Also, uh, the posterior where uh, each uh, the J, uh, an observation J, uh, fall in the uh, combination of uh, classes HR of the second level that we already consider in the first and uh, the second step. So, for this reason, uh, with the, the, the deep sampler, the full deep sampler, uh, the generated chain converges to uh, the joint conditional probability. That uh, otherwise we cannot uh, split, and uh, we cannot use an algorithm uh, like the uh, yeah, for example algorithm, but we need to use uh, this uh, simulation for this. Uh, another question? No? Well, uh, well uh, we can just go to the. Uh, we can just thank the speaker once. <laughs>